attention on this one. Didn't I say that even that many years ago? We're proud to be here today to honor all that is good in education. We're here for all the educators in our schools that promote teamwork among staff, students, and parents. <coughs> We're here for teachers who believe that children always come first. We're here for boards of education and boards and trustees that plan for success. And we're here for all of the children attending our schools, knowing that their success or failure lies in our hands as educators. Today we can read in any newspaper or watch any of several documentaries search the internet to find out what we need to do to improve our schools. Would you agree? Everybody has advice for us. But it shouldn't be a secret. We know very well that one of the greatest factors in building a successful school, an effective school, is the leadership and vision of strong administrators and teachers. Today, tonight, we honor three of the best three who are among the most successful. I share these thoughts tonight because I believe that all of us, student teachers, education majors, teachers, administrators, and parents, all have the opportunity to make an impact on learning, an impact on sharing a commitment for improving our schools. As educators, we share the vision, the decisions, the successes, and yes, the problems. Everyone and everything must work in unison to reach desired outcomes in the development of quality environments and quality schools. Schools with a clear vision and the firm belief that every student is important and capable of learning everything we have to teach them. Congratulations to the 2012 Hall of Excellence honorees. On behalf of faculty and students, I thank you for your contributions toward the creation of effective learning environments for our children. Educators make a lot of lasting impressions in a lot of little ways. I want to take this opportunity to thank Kathy, Jim, and Bob for all of the little things you did every day to make your schools great places to live and to learn. You, as educators, are three of America's finest and most valuable resources. Thank you. And for those of you who weren't here earlier, across the way, I'd like the um, education faculty to stand up, please.
once again, I would like to introduce our favorite educator, President Valentine. I have to say, don't you just love this space? <laughs> Whoever thought going to the lab could be so much fun? <laughs> How many of you had chemistry in this location? Not many people took chemistry, did they? <laughs> well, it's an absolutely gorgeous spot, and we're so glad to showcase it. We did the dedication yesterday, and. I can tell you, uh, students, uh, I'm sure you would readily admit that this is just a great space for student learning. It's a community study space, great classrooms. Uh, we have all kinds of learning taking place here, including different types of coffee. So that's all part of it. So, well, welcome everybody, and, and welcome to the sixth annual Education Hall of Excellence. We are so proud to have you here. We are gathered this evening to honor three alums who have distinguished themselves in the field of education. Obviously, at Culver Stockton College, honoring educators has a special place in our heart. Dating back to the founding in 1853, we have been a leader in preparing educators as one of the founding principles of our final college. Our three honorees join a very select group of individuals in the Hall of Excellence. To date, 27 extraordinary individuals have been inducted, and I'm pleased that we have some of you with us this evening to be recognized. I think we would all agree that there is no greater challenge and no better reward than devoting a life to education. Kathy, Jim, Bob, congratulations. It's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker this evening, who just happens to be one of the 27 extraordinary recipients of the Education Hall of Excellence Award, having been inducted in 2011. The, accomplishment, the accomplishments of Robert Gillum, class of 78, are truly extraordinary. The 2011 Illinois Superintendent of the Year now that's the whole state of Illinois, including Chicago, because a lot of us don't include Chicago when we say <laughs> President-elect nominee by the National Conference of Educators for the American Association of School Administrators, a member of the advisory board of the Illinois State Board of Education, president of the Illinois Association of School Administrators. What a line of of attributes for this person. Bob's wife, Kathy, also spent her career in education, so just imagine the conversations that they would have over the dinner table. <laughs> Bob recently retired as superintendent of the Ball Chatham School District, but that just means that he's going to do something different, very much like what we do here at Culver Stockton College. As a lifelong educator, we can count on his contribution and continuation of helping others through education. If you attended the dedication of the Educational Technology Lab, you understand what I'm talking about. He and Kathy made that high-tech classroom possible. Please help me in welcoming Bob Gillen. Thank you, President Valentine, for that nice introduction. Credit just the way I wrote it. So, back, thank you. Uh, it's a tremendous honor for me to uh, be welcomed back to campus, pay tribute to the esteemed Hall of Excellence inductees, James and Captain Gilhouse, and classmate, prior, and mentor, friend, Bob Bubbles Hope. <laughs> Kathy and Bob left Canton intent. Uh, impact and change the lives of children. James caught the fire to teach a little later. From all accounts, they became professional educators who excelled in an era of rapid change in public education. Like many stewards of learning, they toiled in obscurity to serve children in society's greatest asset, public education. 
they made a difference in the lives of children. Okay. Honorees, Mark Twain said, it's better to deserve honors and not receive them than to have them and not deserve them. Today, we proclaim that your contributions are truly worthy and warrant of our esteem. Tonight, we recognize and exalt your performance as outstanding alumni of Culver Stockton College. Congratulations. I was taking a little bit of a miss uh, when I read the program and there was going to be three inductees uh, this year. Uh, last year, there was only one. Uh, the faculty tried to convince me that that's maybe because I was the only nominee. Uh, but I really think it's probably because you, you choose, you can only do this by the pound, is that right? So you can only have one last year. <laughs> Certainly selection to the Clover Stockton Hall of Excellence last year changed my reputation on campus and in this community. It will likely do the same for each of you. Watch for the subtle changes very carefully. For me, it's now nice to know that when people wave at me, they use all their fingers. <laughs> Seriously, the bond is alumnus of the fine institution. Once is always shared with great pride. Culver Stockton College prepared me to live the American dream, and for that I have been blessed. My reflection of life on the hill always includes the friendships and personal relationships that develop in the classroom, on the field of play, and in fraternal life. Many of you in this room shared those experiences. Tom Ernst, Jack Delabar, Jeff McReynolds, Katie Greger, we're all close friends as teens. Ed Schoenfeld kept my competitive juices flowing with a traditional rivalry. <laughs> That's making it in the room, Ed. <laughs> Mr. Earlier. There was a sense of justice last year when Ed played a role in my introduction. His message of regret, sportsmanship, and maturation were symbolic of life's lessons learned in the heat of battle. And lastly, for Bob Bubbles Hogan, who was a model and mentor for both education majors and major jumpers. I think Bob had a few majors while he was on campus. I think every year we'd ask him what he was going to major in, and it was different. But Bob could always provide solitude, counsel, and a cold one from his off-campus trailer. And if, and if Bob didn't answer the door, Delabar always told us where they had to keep. <laughs> when asked to speak tonight, I was encouraged to share a little more about my unlikely story and journey to the campus. So here it goes. I'm the product of a gang-ridden, drug-infested, high-crime neighborhood in Chicago born of teenage parents with limited 8th grade educations. School was not a priority in Humble Park. Emotional survival for being moved six times by the 5th grade led to reliance on being the class clown. By the time I reached middle school age, I was stealing food and clothing. Drug and alcohol use was a common activity. At age 13, I was denied access to every high school of choice for behavioral reasons. Teacher referrals to Lane Tech and Gordon Tech simply said, do not waste your time. He lacks self-discipline and is unmotivated. By age 15, with a phony ID in hand, I was working an eight-hour night shift at the assembly line, going to school primarily for social reasons, and competing in four sports. Generational poverty was our norm, even if it was not defined as such. By 18, four of my closest friends, all living on the same city block, were dead from drug abuse, overdose, or weapons. Many others dropped out of high school just to run the streets. Somewhere along the line, I learned the only ticket out of poverty was through education. As a student, I persevered through a high school with a greater than 50% dropout rate. And during the four years I attended Lakeview High School, as a Caucasian, I became a minority. Coaches, 
few special teachers, and game days kept me in school. Then even as an all-city athlete, all hope of college was diminished through admission standards. Somehow, Dr. Jack McBride convinced the Culver Stockton College Admissions Office to take a chance on an undisciplined 17-year-old with a 1.12 GPA and a 17 ACT. Without Jack's persistence, I would have never made it to college, and like the rest of my family, I'd be probably driving a Chicago taxi, heck, where you going to, Mac? <laughs> it's a debt I repay by emulating Jack's work ethic, demanding as it was. My time on campus was also influenced by another Dr. McBride, Burrow. He not only inspired the teacher within, but instilled a love of learning. As I mentioned earlier today, I was never a student, but I became a learner on this campus. His trust in my capabilities led to a graduate school scholarship and a principalship at age 24. My lifeline built a passion for advocacy, a tough righteous demand for equity, and a quick rational assessment of political situations. Still unique to my professional preparation was the deep understanding of impact of poverty, socioeconomic status, and limited household resources have on learning and student achievement. My roots inspired me to be committed, driven, and an influential advocate for all students. In Culver Stockton, refined the man I would become. With 31 years of institutional leadership, more successes and accolades than one deserves now behind me, I am proud that our family can now repay a small part of that debt, the one we owe this fine institution. Our ability to contribute to the campus revival by supporting the EdTech Lab is a proud endeavor for our household. In keeping with the chance Culver Stockton took on me, by granting me admission, we are also doing the same by helping fund some partial scholarships at high schools that are dear to our family. So the Wildcat tradition will thrive. The debt we repay will never match the impact my degree had on paving the path to success, wealth, and security. Not only have we enjoyed the riches of our life experiences, but the lives of our children and grandchildren will be forever enriched as well. I can stand here today saying that 100 years of generational poverty is over for the given man. I've learned that intellectual currency includes maximizing the value of cultural inclusivity, equity, transparency, and accountability. The relationships I formed in college taught me how to deal with and enrich these currencies. Probably a few others as well. For all of us, the essence of who we are and are yet to become is influenced by the relationship with this outstanding institution. I know I was fortunate to have provided, been provided an opportunity by Culver Stockton that could not have been reciprocated or replicated anywhere else. <clears throat> Symbolized by career honors that have put me on a national stage with the likes of Michael Fullen, Malcolm Gladwell, Colin Powell, Bob Marzano, and Arnie Duncan, is the quality of preparation that was born right here on this campus. These experiences have been humbling, at times astounding, but never possible without the risk and opportunity provided me by Culver Stockton College. It's been an honor to share part of my story with you. I hope it's a tradition that continues with bringing students and taking risks in the future. In closing, I'd like to thank a few words for the students in the attendance. As you make your way through life, cherish your individuality. Rather than seeking ways to fit into the mainstream styles and jargon, be unique. Find a way to shine. Take it from someone who's hired many not more than my share of superstars, eight of my former employees have reached their aspirations of career and now serve as successful school superintendents themselves. It's your differences, not your similarities, that help you stand out in life. To our honorees, congratulations on an honorable career and induction into this Hall of Excellence. I proudly welcome you as a member. 
I hope that you can find a way to also give back to Culver Stockton College. My wife Kathy and I found it feels real good. To those who knew me when, I only appear to be Swell Old Bob in presentation coat and tie. You know, Swell Old Bob in other contexts just translates to SOB. <laughs> Dr. Valentine, Dr. Hammer, Mr. Barkley, I thank you for this invitation and the privilege to serve. God bless all the stock and college.
They were both problem solvers. A dynamic presence who focused on the challenge of a diverse group of students and believed in the potential of their faculties and their students. What a life. What a dedication. What a commitment to kids who many were growing up in poverty. A real understanding of what that meant in terms of achievement and potential. In closing, in honoring these two people, I'd like to call, uh, quote Paul Goodman, the author of Emotional Intelligence, EQ. It is by losing herself, himself, in the objective, in inquiry, creation, and craft, that a man becomes, a woman becomes, something beyond themselves. Congratulations, Kathy and Jim.
this will be in the Hall of Excellence over in Henderson Hall in the, in the, uh, on the third floor with our other <coughs> recipients that we're very proud of you. Oh my. <laughs> uh, this is such a wonderful honor. I am honored um, with my husband. Um, I am very humbled. I want to thank you all for coming to this. And I want to thank my family for coming up from St. Louis and my good friends. I some of you are my sorority sisters. And I am very honored to be here. I have to tell you a few things. Uh, I found out about this award when my husband and I were on vacation in New England. We were on Nantucket and I got a phone call from Eric Barkley. And uh, he told me what Culver was going to do, and I actually took my telephone and looked at it like, are you talking to the right person here? <laughs> I, I, I was just flabbergasted, and I, I feel so honored to be, to be honored here. Because I went to work for every, every day for 31 years, and I did what teachers are supposed to do, and I had no idea that I would ever be recognized in this way. Um, I would like to have some notes here. I, they asked me to share a few things. Uh, when I went out to Montana, I was just a graduate from Culver. I got on the train in Chicago, went out to Montana. I did not know a single person there. I did not know where I would end up. I was a little nervous to go on an Indian reservation. And it turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful gig. Um, my husband, after he got out of the service, joined me there. And we have three grown children and five grandchildren who also live there. But um, Culver prepared me so well. I would not have succeeded at another college. I was actually quite average in my music and um, academically and financially. My family could not afford to send me to college, so I got a lot of financial aid, and I couldn't have done what I did without being at Culver Stockton. Everyone helped me get through this, um, my music teachers and all the financial aid department and, and the wonderful, wonderful atmosphere at Culver. I, I love it. It's, it's so great to be back. Living in Montana, we don't get to come here very often, and it is such a thrill. I am so jealous of you kids in college now to have the wonderful facilities that you have because we did not have computer labs and the nice CP, cat's paws. And um, so, and congratulations to all of you. I, I want to tell you, you, being in education, you will never have a boring day at school. Um, go with energy, go with love for your students. Show them your, how much you care. Uh, be excited. If you lose your passion for what you teach, you might as well just hang it up and go find another job. You've got to be passionate. You've got to love the kids that you that you teach. I mean, we, we know we all we don't like the same level of kids. I prefer high school. A lot of people prefer elementary students. And if you're going into middle school education, I bow down to you. <laughs> 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 And the people that love to teach middle school, they've got a place in heaven and they've got a crown because that is the toughest age, I think. My husband was a principal for how many years at middle school, and I think it's the hardest position in the school. But thank you all very much for this, and good luck to all you kids going into education. It's such a wonderful feeling. It's so rewarding. And, and you'll find out from the students after you leave how much, it, how much you've meant to them. And there's no other occupation quite like this. So good luck to all of you, and thank you again, Colter Stockton.
because we're classmates. And look at her. Look at me. so much. Thank you uh, for the introductions. I am truly honored and humbled uh, by this, this uh, opportunity. I will say that Culver Stockton really means everything to me. Uh, it changed my life. I was at DePaul University. It probably wasn't the correct choice to, to begin with for me. Um, Dr. Helsebeck took a chance on me and uh, he was president of the college at the time, and I am forever grateful for that. Um, I had great teachers here, uh, Mr. Sperry, Mr. Lee, um, I think Mr. Predmore, I had Dr. Tower as a band director, and I don't think I'm the only person that can be said about this, but there's one person that probably did more than anything to make sure that I succeeded at college and saved me. And that is Olga Bates. I <laughs> a great, great deal. She was a wonderful person. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, learn by traveling and learn by experiencing things here at Culver Stockton. Um, a couple of things that were very meaningful to me and that, that caused me to learn a lot was uh, an interim session in January where uh, Olga Bates organized a trip uh, along the Santa Fe Trail. I think that was a passion of hers as well, and it fit in with, uh, we took two car loads, 
and I took a lot of pictures, I learned a lot, we researched a lot, and I used, uh, I made a presentation out of that, and I used that in my teaching of fourth graders and fifth graders for many years after that. It was very meaningful, and uh, I learned a lot. I also had the opportunity, um, and not everybody can get into Shakespeare, and I probably couldn't have uh, through the class I took as far as reading Shakespeare, but we took a trip. We went up to Stratford, north of Toronto, uh, for a Shakespeare, Shakespeare festival, and we really got into it, and that, that is why, because we went up there and we experienced something that a lot of students uh, wouldn't necessarily get into by just reading. So, you know, Colbert offered those opportunities to me, and in my education and my teaching, I did the best I could do to, to offer students uh, valuable experiences out the field or on, on, on trips. Um, for most of my years, the school board and the superintendents were quite supportive, and we were able to take some amazing uh, trips uh, where we uh, learned a great deal in, in Montana, up into uh, Calgary, Edmonton, and uh, Yellowstone, and so on. So we, we had some experiences, but I got that opportunity to hear it uh, started at Culver Stop, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, just, just a few words, I guess, that I could, I, I was given a few suggestions of things that I could say real briefly, but um, maybe since there's some ed education students here, um, I, I could give maybe some pointers uh, as you go into the field that are so important for first-year students as they start uh, into their educational career. And the one thing is when you get hired and, and learn the policies, of the school district, learn uh, the procedures, the expectations, um, learn what the classroom management uh, program is, if it's very important at that school, and then um, do your own thing as well with it, within the guidelines that is allowed uh, by that. But those things are really quite important as you start so you don't get into a jam uh, doing things that are not acceptable at that particular school district. Um, Build a positive rapport with your students. That's so critical. You, you, you learn, you talk about not necessarily having to be their friend all the time, but you really do have to you know, build a positive rapport. And you have to uh, create an environment of mutual respect. And there, then you can teach, and then students can learn. Um, enthusiasm, my wife talked about that. Energy, um, a, a fast, appropriate pace to your teaching is so important, especially with, uh, with uh, children and students this day and age. Because uh, if it's slow-paced, or if it's boring, you'll lose them immediately, and there will be many distractions. Uh, know how, uh, develop a really uh, good classroom management plan for you that will, that will allow you to succeed. You, you'll have to learn how to diffuse um, distractions that happen in your class. You could be teaching away, and the best lesson you've ever taught, and something happens over here, and there's a distraction. And you have to ask yourself three questions. Can I still teach? Can he or she still learn? And can they still learn? And if the answer is to yes to those three questions, keep teaching. Just don't worry about it, because your time is too valuable, and you don't want to lose that. So uh, if it's no, then you can come up with some sort of interaction. But the interaction you don't want to do is yell, knock it off. Next time you're going to stay in recess, miss 10 recesses. You don't want to do that type of thing. That's going to mess everything up. Uh, but there are ways to interact quickly. Make, a, make an easy statement that, Johnny, I need you to stop doing that, and then keep teaching right away. Because if you get in the teacher, kid's space, in their space, if you hesitate long enough, they'll just there'll start being an interaction there that you didn't want to create. So those are some real quick suggestions for uh, for beginning teachers. Always communicate with parents in a positive way. There's nothing worse than uh, parents getting continual letters from the school district or phone calls of a negative nature. So you can set things up for success by from the very beginning by creating a, a good atmosphere, a mutual respect, <coughs> and uh, keep parents informed. Um, you know, I'm very impressed with what I've seen today at Culver Stockton College. I, uh, the facilities are amazing, and they've really been kept up and improved. The, the, the uh, programs that I've been able to see here are remarkable, I think. 
Um, the technology is cutting edge and it's, it's uh, something you can be very proud of and thankful for because that is how what students are going to be doing all their lives. And I think it's so important. I, I tell, we always tell our middle school students especially, uh, now it's in the elementary students also, we have to be careful with technology because it can get you in trouble. Um, it can get students in trouble with, with the cameras on the phones inappropriately. Uh, texting at night um, can mess everything up for a principal or a teacher the next day. Things we didn't create, but we have a lot of residue to, to deal with the next day. So, uh, and I tell, I, I, I kind of reminded my teachers, especially the young teachers, uh, as they came in, to uh, make sure you use technology to take you somewhere positive and forward. Um, be very careful about Facebooking with your students at this day and age, um, because it has to be done in a fair or a, a safe way, because things can happen. Technology, in other words, can't get a person in trouble, and as we know from some politicians, it's gotten some adults in a lot of trouble. And well, that's just a caution for educators. We uh, use it uh, to take you in a positive way. And it can be, an, it's an amazing tool. Um, the professors that I've met here and seen here today, the staff members here at Over Stockton, and the students that I've met and have talked with, I'm very impressed with what is going on here at Over Stockton. It's something that's going on very good here. And it's, uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity to come back here, and I want to thank you so much for uh, recognizing us. And, and, and students, I think you're going into a wonderful profession. Um, don't fall into the trap that you hear all the time on the news about how terrible American education is and how bad the schools are. I personally don't buy into that. I think more things are happening in a positive way. We are, having, we are doing more, and we're having a greater impact on students than ever, and I really believe that. And uh, it's you all that are going to carry that forward. And I really respect the fact that you're going into education, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much.
signed by Ann Hammer, the chair of the Education and Applied Arts Division, and Richard Valentine, the president of the college. And on behalf of the Education Department and Division, uh, we are making a gift uh, to your favorite chair. And you have elected to return that back to Culver Stockton College to the music program in honor of your wife, Martha. Thank you.
parents weekend, usually included Bro and I, Bro was from the East Coast, and uh, the Delabar family. We always adopt the Delabar family. I don't think it's so much we adopt them as much, but Mr. Delabar is put at the bill to take us out to eat that, that evening. We always enjoyed that. Um, Bob Dillon was right about one thing tonight. I did change majors a lot. I think I started out pre-med. <laughs> I think I had D in general biology. I think that was, that was my first indication that I wasn't going to make it a pre-med. But um, Clover Stockton offered you a chance to take a variety of courses. Then my freshman year, I did act in a play um, on stage, on, in, in the theater, with my sister Carol. Um, allowed me to do that, and I, you know, probably for three or four weeks, I was thinking maybe I'd be a speech major. Uh, you know, then, um, to Christian Heritage, I don't think I wanted to be a minister, but I took that <laughs> and then I was all day. Um, took a business class. Criminal justice major were big uh, at that time at, at Colby Stockton College. Uh, um, and you, you just had the opportunity to try a lot of things. Elementary education was what I settled on, and I never looked back, never regret it. I really enjoyed the opportunity um, you know, to work in the, in the field of education, and especially at that grade level. It was interesting a few years later when my uh, middle daughter, Emily, became a student at Colbert. She had no idea what she was going to major in either. She had the opportunity to come, play a little softball, sing in the choir with um, Mr. McSpadden, try a different thing, and she did try a few courses and um, different, and not sure what she majored in. Ends up going to art education. I'd never taken an art class in high school before. Um, took a ceramics class and came home and said, you know, I really like this art. You know, I think I'm going to major that, and that's what her chosen field was. And I think that's just another indication how Colbert Stockton allows you, the individual, to grow um, rather than you becoming just a number when you have to fit into a certain, a certain way. I um, graduated from Colbert in 77, top fifth grade in Hannibal, great experience from, from Hannibal, um, except for my first job. Uh, elementary principal position at Lewis County C1 Schools, which was a learning experience from day one. Um, and um, about 1986 was time to, Martha and I kind of felt like it was maybe time to move on and had an um, interview in um, Fulton, Missouri. Came back from that interview, it went pretty well. So I made a call to the only person I knew from Fulton, Missouri. That would be Ken Gregor. And I think the conversation went something like this. Greg, what are you up to? Uh, not much, but what are you doing? <laughs> and um, I said, you know, I just got back from interview in um, Fulton, Missouri, and I said, I think I might get the job if I'm off here. He said, God damn, Bubbles, did you get fired? <laughs> and I said, no, 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 no. I said, well, Martha is ready to get a little larger community. It's got a Walmart and McDonald's. And I said, well, you've got to get fired and you're looking for it. And he goes, okay, I'll call my buddy in Fulton. You're in. I wasn't really looking for that, but you know, 25, 26 years later, um, that buddy and I have become very, very good friends. And um, um, I know Kenny still will say that he got me the job, but I think I had it before he called. But that, but that was not. Yeah. So don't embarrass me. <laughs> yeah, I think he said, don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. I'm extremely proud of my three daughters. They've all become educators and are making a difference every day um, with the students they, they, they work with. Um, teaching education is a tough, tough profession. Uh, you know, and that really was probably wasn't what I would have chosen for my daughters, but I'm very proud that that's, they decided to follow their mother and I in, in education. Um, but, but it's a tough profession. And sadly, and those of us, the old ones that have been in education here for a few years, I just see it get tougher and tougher with the standards and assessment and accountability. It's going to get tough. Um, but I am very proud of um, um, my daughters and uh, what they've accomplished thus far and look forward to long careers and happy careers. What have I always tried to do? I want everyone that I meet to become a part of me. I hope I leave a, my own personal stamp on each one of you that had the chance to meet me or interact with me. I'm so proud of the different people that I've here tonight. Uh, I guess they came out here, Bob Gill, but I, I think they came out here, Bob Logan, too, from ET House. And uh, we did, did have a lot of good times. 
I want to recognize another guy too, because he wasn't a teak, and he took a little abuse from um, Bob Gill. That'd be Ed Schoenfeld. And Ed and I, um, we weren't um, friends in college or anything, but uh, just as fate has it, they put us together as um, back in Hannibal, Missouri, about the first year Ed was out, and my second year out, and we coached Ed the ninth grade football together and became uh, lifelong friends. Uh, I had some of the same dreams, ambitions. Back when we started off, um, back in 77, we used, we used to kind of kid each other, hey, they head to the top, the very top. And um, uh, Ed's been, been a, a good friend. Uh, he probably should have taken his teak bid and not gone hawk, but you know, he can't hold <laughs> can, can, um, that against him. Again, pleasure to be here. Um, pleasure to have this honor. Deserving of it or not, but thank you.